Okay, okay, this is cool, but what tech are you using? This is a pretty good question. I review a lot of tech, and so people are just kind of curious, okay, well, that's great if you liked this thing, but what do I use on a daily basis? And so I thought, hey, this might be a good opportunity to do a review of my gear. What am I actually using to make videos, make artwork, make everything? Hidden away deep in the description of all of my videos is a link to my website for my gear page where I talk about all of the things that I use and I just recently updated it with some new stuff. So, so new stuff is there, but I thought it might be good to do like an overall tour give you an idea of what I use on a daily basis and what I really, really like. Let me start with the hardware. The, the main thing that I use more than anything else is right behind me. This is my iMac Pro. And you might be wondering, if I'm getting into illustration or I wanted to be a pro level illustrator, do I need an iMac Pro? And the answer is no, no, you do, do not get an iMac Pro. This thing was way too expensive. I got this for video production. I had an, uh, a MacBook Pro, 2015 MacBook Pro. In fact, I'm reading my script from it right here, right now. I still use it from time to time. And I made videos on it, and that worked for me for years, but last year I decided to upgrade. Now, the main reason I'm using this for video is because it used to take me, I'd make a 10-minute video, and then I'd go to export it, and it would take 20 minutes to a half an hour to actually export that video from Adobe Premiere. Now with this, it takes two to three minutes to export a video. So if I make a mistake, and believe me, I make a lot of mistakes, it's much easier to fix that mistake and export that video and not waste nearly as much time. Plus, if I'm doing a long form course with a lot of pieces, parts, some of those courses, my Procreate course is like five hours long. Exporting out new stuff for that would take an entire afternoon or usually what I do is I just set it to process overnight and I go to bed and just wake up in the morning and all my videos would be done. So this has really sped up my process. It is fantastic for video. It is complete and total uh, overkill for illustration. And if you're thinking about getting one for illustration, you do not need it. So now that that disclaimer is out of the way, I'll, I'll say this, I really like it. There's only one thing I don't like about it and that is the speakers on this thing. The speakers are pure garbage. They're horrible. So that was my 30 second. I Mac Pro review. So what drawing tablet do I have connected to it? The drawing tablet I want to have connected to it most of the time is the Satik Pro 24. And when I can, I use it. Now I'm saying when I can, why am I saying that? My workflow is different than I think a lot of people's workflow is. I spend most of my time reviewing things as opposed to drawing on, on a daily basis. I mean, drawing is part of the job, but I'll get something in the mail and then I have to uninstall old drivers on my computer reinstall the new drivers for the new piece of hardware, and then I'm usually using that piece of hardware for a week, sometimes two weeks, um, while I'm getting ready for the review. And so, if I wanna draw on the Cintiq Pro 24, which I really enjoy using, it's just impractical to uninstall that and restart my computer and reinstall new drivers and then restart my computer again just to use something. If I was using this every day, that'd be great. But usually what I'm actually drawing on, if I'm drawing on a PC or if I'm drawing on a Mac, what I'm drawing on is whatever I'm reviewing at that time. I usually don't have one drawing tablet that I'm using full time. What I'm saying is they're all my children. I love them all, but not all of them. The vast majority of my drawing time actually happens right here. This is the iPad Pro. I used an older version of the iPad Pro before I got the new one and I used that a ton. For the most part, that's where most of my drawing happens. A lot of the illustrations and animations you see in my video actually start out in Procreate and then I'll export them out into Adobe Animate onto the desktop and add the moving parts or move the layers around and things like that. I think the reason I like the iPad Pro so much for drawing is because it's so seamless. Like I mentioned, I'm always using a different drawing tablet. I'm always play, playing with drivers. And the thing I like about the iPad Pro for my workflow personally is that I pick it up and I just use it. It is simple and frankly, it's fun to draw with. It's also portable. So if I have to take my daughter to Girl Scouts or I have to take her off to ice skating and I'm gone for the evening, I can just grab that and go and work wherever. So that the, the portability of the iPad Pro is really nice as well. Now for years, I actually used the Surface Pro 3. I've, I've recently taken that off my gear list because I haven't been using it too much. The iPad Pro has more or less replaced that 
uh, mostly because of Affinity Designer, and I can I can just use that. Procreate has gotten better. I can do more with Procreate. I've just gotten more familiar with working in iOS. But for years, I used the Surface Pro, and it's fantastic for taking stuff on the go. As far as software, most of what I'm using is the Adobe Suite. So I'm using Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, and Adobe Animate. Those are obviously not on the iPad, so that's something I've had to kind of get used to with my workflow. But I do spend most of my time here at home at my desk, and, and so all of that stuff works pretty well. I used to use Clip Studio a lot, and, and I haven't used it as much in recent years. That used to be my go-to drawing program. It's still fantastic. There's even an iPad version. I, I just don't use it that much anymore. I don't know why. For testing purposes, I use Autodesk Sketchbook, and I use Medibang a lot, mostly because they work across the board. You can literally use those applications anywhere. Android, iOS, desktop, Windows PC, all that stuff. And it's nice having that baseline and knowing, okay, this is the same program, or in theory, it's kind of the same program across all these things. So it should feel similar while I'm drawing in it and using it across platform. As far as what I use on the iPad, let's take a little tour. So let's take a look at what I keep on my iPad. This is, this is my home screen. I spend almost no time on this screen. This is the screen where I live on, and this is most of the stuff that I use. From, from a drawing perspective, there's really two programs that I'm using on the iPad all the time. That is Procreate, and that is Affinity Designer. Procreate I love for sketching, drawing, painting, just having fun. Affinity Designer, for me personally, has been a game changer because I can do a lot of the professional things that I'm used to using on the desktop right here, you know, on the iPad. It's fantastic. I'm I'm a big fan. That's not a secret. I'm I'm kind of a fanboy about that. But I but I absolutely love both of those apps. Both of those apps are are in my use all the time category. I have a folder for illustration where I have things like Astropad, which I, I really like Astropad. I just don't use it too much personally. Uh, same thing with Clip Studio. I love Clip Studio. I, I just don't use it much. I have Affinity Photo, which I, I don't think is even on this iPad right now. It has like a little download icon. Uh, things like Vectornator, Linea Sketch, a lot of applications that I really like. I just don't really use all that much, but I keep them in that folder. I also have Adobe Apps, which is the same way. I have some old Adobe Apps that I just never ever use. Some things that I use all the time are Spotify for music, Facebook, because I, I guess I have to. Flipboard, uh, I, I collect news and stuff. Marvel Unlimited, which is basically like a Netflix for Marvel comics. Like you can just read thousands of comics. It's almost overwhelming. My YouTube stuff, uh, YouTube studios. I live in Google Docs. These are all of my uh, uh, scripts. And anytime I have an idea, I make a new script. Um, so everything lives in Google Docs. And Fall Apple Event 2018. Started a script for that right now. The only thing that it says is Fall Apple Event 2018. Turns out that that event was just about the iPhone. They didn't mention the iPad, so I never... Did anything with this document, I should probably delete it. But any idea that I have ends up getting created in a new document, and then I can always go back and, and use that. All of that is on my iPad. I use it on the desktop too, uh, but it's nice to have here on the iPad. Facebook Messenger, you need Reddit, it's just really fun. Um, Instagram, uh, I wish there, this is the iPhone version, so it opens up really funny on the iPad. It's not fun to use on the iPad, but I guess it kind of works. Um, uh, and Games, I don't really have many games. Dra the original Dragon Quest is on there. Uh, I play Civ Six. That is my one iPad game that I allow for myself that's a lot of fun. I have Twitter, of course. Mostly I use Twitterific for that stuff, but I need Twitter for notifications and things like that. Occasionally there's some things that the Twitter app just does better than Twitterific, but not much. Mostly I like, like, like Twitterific. Uh, uh, books, I listen to a lot of audiobooks, especially when I'm drawing. This is the part where you're like, Brad is boring AF, because all of my stuff, I love history books. Um, right now, I'm listening to a, a, a book on linguistics and language, how to be a tutor, like from Tudor England. Dwight D. Eisenhower, yeah! Anyway, this is, like I said, I'm really boring. I like history stuff. <laughs> Anyway, that is the definition of oversharing. So, so let's go on to my video gear. The next part, I want to talk about my camera gear a little bit. So get ready. We're going behind the scenes. You're going to see some messes here, people. First and foremost, the way this is all set up as far as lighting is jimmy rigged. I'm, I'm learning video on the fly. I should know more than I actually do. Um, for those of you who have been around for a while, you probably know some of my lighting setups. For example, let me see if I can go over here. There is a, a ring light 
that ring light is actually, you can see the reflection of it in my Mac actually behind me. Um, that ring light is lighting up this wall because I need as much light behind me as I can get. Over here, let me tilt up. I have some cheap Amazon lighting I got, which is okay. It's not great. I have another one of those um, kind of over there behind me that you can't really see right now. This, what you see here, this is the clean side of my office. What I'm not showing off camera is the not so clean side of my office. I don't know if I'm brave enough to show that or not. Last year, I did some major upgrades to, to my video quality. I am using the Canon EOS 80D. I think this is the same camera that Casey Neistat uses. That's why I got it. I know that's a stupid reason to buy a camera, but I like it and it works well. For years, I used the iPhone 6 to film all my videos and I, I was really proud of that because I love the fact that people had no idea. I also got a decent tripod for it, which makes you know filming my iPad from the top down or any drawing tablet from the top down so much easier. Another investment I made last year is this light box. It's a fold out thing so I can set it on my desk. I love this. I made the mistake years ago of buying black desks because I didn't know I was going to be filming product on them and it just dark products on a dark desk look bad. This light box solves that problem for me and I think really improves the quality of the shots that I get of these products. The other thing I have is my microphone, which I'm tapping on right now. Bunch of people were like, Brad, never hit that microphone again. This thing is the Audio-Technica ATR2100-USB. I've had this for a while. I love the sound that this microphone has. I've used a Blue Yeti and I still use that from time to time but I really like this microphone. I capture my picture with the camera and I capture my audio separately and then I sync them together in Premiere Pro and edit away. This room that I'm in is kind of small and I get a lot of echo in it and this doesn't capture nearly as much echo as some of the other microphones that I've tried out. There is one catch. You will probably notice my microphone is taped up. No, I did not break it. This microphone has the brightest light I have ever owned attached to it. Whenever it is plugged into a USB port, what ends up happening is it, it the room just glows blue it is ridiculous if you see my house from the outside at night please don't all you would see was this one room that just boom glowed blue it was ridiculous so i have some bristol board and masking tape on this light because no light should ever be that bright for a USB microphone. So I hope that was helpful. That is my gear. This is the stuff that I use on a daily or weekly basis at least. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the comment section. That is all I have for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in a couple of days.